right, hello and um, welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from actually a kind of rainy San Diego today, which is unusual, not so unusual for my guest who's up the coast in Seattle, Guillaume Viatra. How are you doing, Guillaume? I'm doing fantastic. You, you know how to make it pop from the get go. <laughs> Thank you. And Guillaume like is the yeah, Guillaume is the principal and founder of MetaHelm. And you teach CEOs, leadership teams and entrepreneurs how to create a strategic initiative. And that's what we're going to talk about today is how to sell innovation with the strategic uh, narrative. So let's get straight into it, Guillaume. Uh, when you talk about strategic narrative, what do you mean? Well, John, uh, this is a question that um, I've been, you know, researching for uh, for a while. What I mean by this is I define a narrative as a system of stories. So from the get go for our listeners here, I'd like to say that I make a difference between story and narrative. Most people don't. Uh, and, and, you know, it, almost rightfully so, it's kind of a common, uh, you know, uh, thing to say, what's our story? You know, we should get our story straight. And if you look in the dictionary, story and narrative kind of have the, a similar definition. But there is one slight nuance uh, in, the, in the term narrative that makes really a big impact for us here in the business context and, and launching new products, launching new ventures, which is a narrative conveys a very specific point of view when we talk about the narrative in an industry, we refer to a set of conversations. And that's why I like to think about it as a system of conversation. If this is a system, it means that you can break it down and you can reconstruct it and you can actually shape it strategically for the benefit of something you're putting out on the market. So uh, so has, have, things, have things evolved now to where um this is this is perhaps more important th than it ever was because i think part of the issue now is uh, products and services people have the perception nowadays that they're pretty commoditized that they're pretty much all the same or whatever so how you it's the experience of working with the people or listening to them or the narrative at the very beginning those are kind of things that capture people i think and, and have come to the fore has been even more important than ever well, you know, uh, let, let me uh, let me just uh, take an example. I, I've been working for a client uh, which marketing and advertising span has completely shifted from ways to push stories, you know, to to the market, to customers, uh, very aggressively, and, and almost, you know, um, pushing it out as a almost thinking like, okay, these are going to be hooks that we can use to engage with customers. But let's face it, you know, who wants to be interrupted during their day with more advertising these days? In fact, if you look at the, at the, at the progress in the uh, industry of ad blockers, you'll see the curve like kind of spike, you know, more and more people. I mean, I have an ad blocker, you know, you, you may have one, you people may have one, you know, we want to be in control of what we consume. We want to, you know, hence, therefore, the, um, the rise of, of companies like Netflix, right, where everything is on demand. And so that's one, that's one of the shifts to a different way to engage with the business. When I talk about narrative, narrative are conveyed through not only through, uh, through stories, not, 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 not only through the telling of stories, but also through the, the living of stories. And companies now have shifted their span quite dramatically towards experiences, you know, sponsoring and supporting events that represents what they believe, their purpose, and so on. So that's one of the that's that's one of the most interesting and, and fundamental fundamental trend. But more recently, I think that and we're seeing it with shifts like the big resignation, what happened during COVID, people want to work with companies who are able to invite them to their narrative. You know, they want to be part of a larger group. They want to belong. We want to belong to a group of people that share the same values, the same purpose. And I think that this was already there before, to be honest, but it's just been magnified just times a hundred or thousand even, you know, we, we, we have yeah. some data around, around this. Um, 70, 70 to 80% of people would rather buy from a company who has a clear and well articulated and also 
uh, lived uh, strategic narratives. You know, there's research on that. Uh, and so we know it. We just have to live with this new normal. And I think a lot of companies are still kind of in the former mode. So yeah. that's the new narrative about strategic narrative. <laughs> I'd yeah, say. yeah, no, I like, I like, I like it. Um, just a couple of things I, I just wanted to pick up on there. What you said, uh, firstly, is uh, the 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 narrative, but it's living the narrative because I think I think where people have gotten maybe a little bit, uh, you know, jaundiced over the years is that remember we went through this time everybody was putting their values on on the website and lovely big letters you know we're customer centric and all this kind right. of garbage un until you actually tried to interact with them as a customer and then you found how uncustomer centric they were uh mm -hmm. so i think people have been burned by all of that now i think people want if you're going to go down this route i think people want to make sure that it's authentic and real yeah for sure you know uh john you're you're talking to the a big advocate for uh, anything but um, mission, vision, uh, purpose statements. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't hate them for what they are. I think having a great statement is awesome. But let's face the reality: how many times have you seen a statement fully lived by a company? It's really, 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 really rare. <laughs> And so what, what I don't, what I, what I am really against is this process of thinking that we're going to encapsulate something as big as that in just one sentence. Um, uh, and we're going to do that, by the way, during the, the, the holiday retreat, you know, in a, in a couple of hours, because mm -hmm. it can be done fast. We're just going to lock ourselves in a room and it's going to be this magic product that we put out there. So uh, I think this is no, no longer good. If you need a statement, at least... Um, think twice, like, do you, do you really need a statement and you know, ask yourself the right question? And if you really, if the answer is yes, which, you know, I support again, uh, do it correctly, yeah. maybe yeah. do it after you've done your strategic narrative. It, you know, it's almost like the title of the book. It's it, it, when you write yeah. a book, it's common on it. It's the last thing you write. It's like, what's my book title? You play with a yeah. few titles to yeah. begin with. You kind of let it go. And then once the book is done, that's when you, that's when you, you finalize the title. It's the same idea with strategic narrative. It, it's got to yeah. be a lot richer than that. And I, and I think something you touched on earlier is like whatever your street strategic narrative ends up, you know, being is that you have it has to be represented in every interaction with the company. So that idea of, of the experience, so pre-sales, during sales, after sales, however somebody interacts with the company, because once upon a time, I think we thought we could just get away with multiple experiences. And of course that doesn't work. You know, you get one experience with sales, then you get a different experience with customer service, yeah. all that. Now people you want a gaps. uniform one. Yeah, you could, sorry to, didn't mean to cut you off. You, no, you no, trade no, gaps. Gone. Yeah, but that, that's that's spot on. You know, one of the most uh, successful and vivid example of how not to do that, I, I actually experienced myself, was with one of the subsidiaries of Alaska Airlines here in Seattle. I was part of a project where um, the CEO was quite visionary, uh, the CEO of Horizon Airline, and wanted to shift the company culture. And instead of doing the traditional thing of, hey, I'm going to gather my leadership team and, and we're going to, you know, wordsmith this thing and then put it out for people to follow, uh, he, he decided he had a much you know bigger vision, and we brought in all 2,500 employees through a series of work sessions where we listened to people first, and then we have we had some activities. It was a it was a two and a half days experience. Uh, we did that in batches, and then we had systems to circle back with people. The, the 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 engagement, the mobilization we got was just you know just mind mind blowing, mind blowing. It was a big effort. It was, it's a large company. It was a big effort. But the results were just just incredible in terms of engagement and then customer service and sales and, and so on. So that's one way to go all in about it. Uh, yeah, and it's inter it's interesting. You know, it's interesting in your in your example there because now you have ownership across twenty five hundred people, as opposed mm -hmm. to maybe you know as you said five years sitting in a room and then like launching it onto the rest of the company and to be honest let's be honest human nature being what it is it's normally greeted with uh people throwing their eyes up to heaven and going oh here's our latest here's our latest one coming out now but the fact is you included everybody there's an ownership yeah i think you know and it's you know the, the process may be different again i mean I, I don't want people to be scared by oh my gosh i'd have to sure. you know 
let everybody talk. It's not, a, not necessarily just a democratic process. It's about this, this key idea is what people will touch, you know, what they, what they will be, uh, leave their fingerprints on will belong to them. And ultimately, that's what a narrative does. I mean, we all live every day with narrative in our mind when we do anything. You know, you drive somewhere, there is a narrative that you're going to be safe. You apply for a job, there is a narrative about the company. There is a, you buy any product, you come with, with, an, with you know, a narrative of something better. So it's really about making people participants versus an audience. So I like to say the difference between story and narrative is what, one of the many differences is that a story has an audience a narrative has participants that's one of them you know if that's a that's a tip that i like to leave people with because when they're unsure about you know how they're maneuvering through this it's a good gauge it's a good criteria to um to go through this you know and another one might be also to consider stories as uh, evidence is element of the past you know stories have have already happened they have a beginning a middle and an end we we know what they are uh, and, 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 you know, you don't have one story in a business. You have thousands of stories. The, the, mm. the deal is how do you make sense of them? How do you organize them? How do you, you know, emphasize the good ones and how do you stop telling the wrong ones? Um, and so a narrative in contrast to that is future focused. It's an invitation to, uh, to maybe a goal that is bigger than your company. And these days we talk a lot about sustainability, the, the you know the, the circular economy. We we hope to be able to uh, you know be better at how we run our economy and, and not just trash the planet. This is a, this is aspirational. We are all you know more and more of us are trying to you know turn turn to this. This is a narrative. You know it has no no certain end, and that's what has been motivating you the human race since the the dawn of time. So. If you operate your your company in the in the mindset of I'm telling a bunch of stories and these stories have a beginning, middle, of an end, and for sure, for sure this is how it's going to work, yeah, you know it's it's one thing, but tr turn to the possibilities as well. You're going to see people react way differently. You're going to see engagement. You're gonna you're gonna create more true believers. At the end of the day, that's the kind of the dream of the you know of this at least the CEOs and and the founders, the um, the, the visionaries I work with. Uh, that's what they're after. They want to make true believers to you know their to their business. And and the fact is, I mean, I think that's a really important point for people to understand is the fact that it you know a narrative is a, is a kind of dynamic, living, breathing thing, um, right. uh, as opposed to the you said as opposed to the stories. And I and and I think people also they want to be involved in where you're going in the future, and they want to be excited about it. And and they also, I mean, I don't think they also, I don't think people necessarily want you to present a defined destination. I think they also want you to provide like um an idea of where you're going and and but to feel like it's all it's a discovery process at the same time well that, that, you know i'd like to make a connection with what you said very earlier in, our, in this conversation is um when products and offers get commoditized when you when you're selling a commodity say say you have a restaurant or you're a financial advisor or uh, you sell um you're a large company you sell batteries we know what these are we know what these products are it's commoditized you know what the story is. You, you know, you get the battery, <laughs> you, you, have, you replace the battery power and you know how the story ends, right? And so narratives puts you in that mode of what else could we shoot for? What else could we bring to our customers? So that's the start of differentiation thinking right there. If you're a commoditized business, that, that's what helps you move forward, innovate, um, think outside the box, differentiate, and you know, maybe build a name for yourself. Yeah, and I think that's a really important. I think that's a really important point as well because uh, if that's the culture of the company and you have a narrative, and the narrative is all about you know innovation and where we can go, it's it's the. I think that spreads a certain level of excitement among the people who are there, and if you can get your people excited, then they'll communicate that excitement. To whoever they speak to you know whether it's whether it's uh, a prospect through sales whether it's an existing customer through a customer service wherever a partner or whatever i think mm. uh, that kind of ex i think people crave that because i think ex excitement and future forward is 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 intoxicating in some ways well yeah and i you know i'm thinking also i mean we're, we're talking business here how much is, how much is this worth like especially mm. like let's talk about recruiting right you're, you're talking about you know 
being excited. So when you communicate your excitement about your business, you know, in sales, obviously you're going to make people excited about a product. Internally, it could drive motivation, engagement, but think about recruiting. Like how much does it cost to hire someone these days? I mean, I just got literally an hour ago on LinkedIn, a colleague of mine is in the Denver market. He's looking for someone and he's been desperately looking for someone, somebody in the technical field. And I mean, he, ter he turns to people like me who are not, I mean, I don't have a big team of engineers. That's just to show you the level of where we are right now with the big resignation. How much is this narrative worse to you when you can shortcut the traditional channels and just work through the excitement of your own team to go be, you know, the next uh, representative or, you know, to scout their own Rolodex, you know, look for maybe people who might be excited also to join your, your team, you know, in their network, on social media, through Instagram, Facebook, and so on. So, so that excitement here, I think, is probably um, a, a kind of new kind of currency, John. I think you're, that's what I'm taking away from your comment here. I'm learning yeah. something here, yeah. I guess. Just the word currency just came to my mind. Yeah. No, no, it's it, true. And the other thing I think is is where this becomes really important is, you know, the nature of work is changing, obviously, and it was changing before the pandemic, but it's, you know, the pandemic has obviously accelerated that. And I think in the future, I mean, we're all, we're going to see hybrid companies as the norm, right? And so you would, sometimes you'll have people in buildings, sometimes you'll have people, sometimes in buildings, sometimes at home, sometimes you'll have people remote who are just various parts of the world, or you'll have contractors who you bring them in to do a certain project and maybe even on a long term. So you, mm -hmm. you have less traditional employee, you know, rather organization structures. How do you, how do you bring that all together? If you like a narrative, narrative is one way that you can easily integrate people into an organization like that when it's non-traditional in its, in its, uh, in its uh, format. Well, that's that. That's true too. I mean, I was the, I did a project for Wells Fargo in 2014, where the goal was to uh, repurpose um, a large chunk of their real estate because it was becoming vacant. Why? Because people were not showing up in the office um, at that time already, because they had mobile phones. You know, all the connectivity was just uh, you know deploy, being deployed uh, and, and adopted at a, at a high rate. So they would take their calls. They would do all their work from home, from the from Starbucks and so on. So they wanted to repurpose uh, real estate. So we're, with COVID, we've seen this. Obviously, everybody's home, um, but 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 that begs the question of how do we keep people aligned if we're not in the office? How do we you know bump into each other, run into each other, and share share ideas and make sure that we are shooting for the same thing that our our progress is optimum, it's maximized. You know, we are all just vectors shooting in all different. But if all the vectors you know point to the same direction, so. Um, I, I think we're. I think it's going to get you know more and more important. And narr the narrative is what you have in your mind. It's kind of unconscious. It's it's the thing that you kind of make decision with. So if this has been built built properly by the rest of the group, if you're in a group where it's kind of it's really clear like what needs to be accomplished. I mean, it's time saved. It's 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 money saved. Um, it's livelihood. I mean, life saved. You know, I have I've I've, I've met many people who. Um, who don't really have a choice but work for companies where it's un frankly it's just uninspiring to work there um and in, in the opposite that's why i do this work is to turn every organization into a source of inspiration you know uh, and i hope that you know the teams at my clients feel feel the opposite but what i'm seeing the results i'm seeing is that there is less time uh doing command and control less um, you know uh, validation meetings are unnecessary because people know what to do if you treat them like adults but that has to start with a good narrative in the first place yeah no I, I totally agree with you and i think it's and i think that's what people are now starting to discover is that you can you can you can develop like highly highly efficient very well performing upbeat excited organizations you don't even need that many people to be honest i mean and you can get the talent from all around the world and if you're aligned it's amazing if you're aligned around a narrative like you say it's amazing how much even a small group of people can achieve yeah i uh right now i have a client here in seattle called news and it's a it's a it's a quite small team and they're so efficient 
Uh, we've been working for two years with them. Um, they provide a solution to uh, get operational technology on their own separate network to avoid uh, big um, cybersecurity threats like you know ransomware and so on. But they, they, it also helps with sustainability and such. It's a very small team, very agile, very nimble, and they work with large companies like Costco, like uh, like Nordstrom. Um, you know, talking to the WalMarts and you know big retailers here. And it's just, in, it's just incredible the impact they've had because they're so focused on the impact they, on the on the outcome that they're they're shooting for. And the narrative that they have is going from wi full wire to wire free. It's wire free operational technology. And constantly, when we um, I, I joined uh, their uh, leadership team uh, meetings, and our one metric is how many lives have we made easier in the past week. In those large organizations it's not how many devices we connect i mean that's that's of course that's a mean that's what we do uh, that's the what but the why is how do we serve customers better and to your point i mean it's uh you know it's it's crazy what a small well aligned efficient team will do it's just for yeah, organizations no, I, I, absolutely and and if and as you said there's if the mission or the goal the narrative there is to make life easier for people that's a very easy one to get your head around and it's a very easy metric to to stay focused on i have a question for you john um you you, you seem i mean we we've talked you know uh, besides this conversation we you you seem very well versed in this topic and i find it um really interesting so i was wondering if you had you know other other connections or other examples you know of companies or if you think about a company who has a very strong strategic narrative, maybe, I don't know, is any, anything comes to mind? Oh, yeah, you put me on the spot. Um, I'm sorry. I should, you I, put me on the spot here. Yeah, no, no, it's I fine. Should, it's fine. I am, um, but this is my, style. Yeah. I'm, I'm very like, you know, spontaneous. So, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I like okay. it. I like it. I, 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 I mean, I, I, off, the, off the top of my head, I, I don't think, I can't yeah. think. I know there are examples, but I will tell you uh, absolutely, I think that we're going, we're starting to see a revolution here in company because I think people, and maybe it's the pandemic, maybe it's whatever, but I think people's tolerance level for crappy service, for right. being treated badly has just gone. It's, there's no tolerance anymore for it because I think there's enough, there's enough examples of uh, innovative organizations who are providing a much better experience for customers. That's why I think the experience is such a key thing going forward. And I think a lot of, there's a lot of traditional and big companies. I mean, you mentioned the airlines earlier. I mean, you're, you're doing great work with Alaska, but if you think of it, the airlines traditionally in America, right? I mean, I used to fly United a lot when I traveled because that was, the, I lived near one of the hubs you know f fly the you know the friendly skies that was their thing oh yeah, yeah. And it was about nine times out of ten it wasn't a friendly experience whatsoever in fact i used to say that to people whenever mm. you know you'd have when they when you'd get a kind of a not very gracious uh experience uh -huh. with somebody i'd say i'd say thanks so this is the friendly skies um okay just checking um but what i'm saying is i think people i think the bumper sticker time is gone because people have, won't pay any attention it doesn't matter what you say it's how yeah. you live it how you live it i think you that's the it. thing and i think that's what's what's happening now people are craving organizations that treat you like a human i think that's that's true you know um just uh, before I forget, the bumper sticker is "Time is online." I'll, I'm going to steal that from you because that's there that's that's pure, that's purely what I believe. And yeah, people want to be treated like uh, like like human beings. There is there's a company that I always look to um, that has a great strategy. It's it's it happened to be in Seattle. Um, it's called Gravity Payments. The CEO is called Dan Price. He's very uh, vocal on social uh, media, especially on LinkedIn. If you follow him. He's got very uh, opinionated views. He's very opinionated as far as how to treat people in a company, how to build a culture. His company is wildly successful. He's, he's, he started with this, almost thinking his company is a movement in the mid nineties. Uh, that's, that's one of the examples I, I like to refer to. But uh, the counter example you gave me counts as a great answer as well. I think, you know, you know it's like, you know, we, we promise you this wonderful experience and you show up and it's nothing like that. I mean, we, we, we caught you, right? It's like, it's like treating people like fish. Like, you know, I put a bait and I'm, I'm reeling you in 
and I'm, and now you're on board and I got you. But for, I mean, what's the point for how long, right? Yeah. This is just a, yeah. just such a short-sighted mentality. And, and I agree with you. People are just are, there's no tolerance for that anymore. So, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Guillaume. I mean, I do, I do think this is, and I think you're in a great space right now with the work you're doing, because I think, uh, more and more organizations are going to need it. So all of Guillaume's information will go below this video. But before we go, please do just tell people a little bit more about what you do. Well, yeah, so you, my company is called MetaHelm. Uh, you, you'll find me on MetaHelm.com. Um, and if you're interested more in, in what I do, um, I publish a, uh, an email on an email list quite frequently um uh, almost daily uh in fact and uh the drop rate is very very low so something good must happen in what i say <laughs> i'll say so i would i would encourage two people to start there i'm about to launch a um a free short email course a crash course in strategic narrative that kind of is going to be a digest of five to six emails you'll get in your inbox one a day you know just like a two three minutes read very quickly but kind of to start this mindset shift and I'd like to encourage people to sign up to my list. They're, they're going to see that coming through before the end of the year. So that's okay. uh, that's that's a good place to start. Fantastic. Uh, well, listen, I would encourage people to check it out. I really do. I'm not just saying this, but I really do believe that now is there's, there's a big change coming and people are looking for something different. People outside the organization and people inside the organization. I think this is a fantastic time to rethink how your organization operates. And I would encourage you to check out Guillaume's work as well, because uh, a good narrative will certainly help you get there. Uh, so thanks again, Guillaume. My name is John Golden. I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you, John.